Good day class. We are here to have another session of sociology of the family. Last week or the last the first class we were able to look at sociology and the family. We tried to have a good understanding of what sociology is all about and to relate it to the family. Today we are going to look at sociology from the global perspective. Or oh, sorry, family from the global perspective. This family is not only found in Nigeria but rather in every aspect of the world. Now, family has been regarded as the cornerstone of society and the most basic unit of social organization, which carries out vital tasks such as socializing children. This is one of the important aspects or role of the family. Why? Because family makes up a society, and sociologists now are interested in the study of the family. Because sociology is the scientific study of the society. Family makes up the society. The kind of upbringing and socialization that the child acquires or the individual acquires from the family determine how he or she will relate in the wider society. But recently, most sociologists assume that the family life was evolving as modernity progresses. The family life is changing every day. Where there, the way the society is changing, so also the family life is changing. Nevertheless, the family has been found in all human society. Anywhere you go, be it Africa, Asia, Latin America, Europe, we have one form of the family or the other. Even for the fact that the kind of family you see in Europe is different from the one you see here in Africa, Nigeria, that does not mean it is not family. They are all family. The family is the main avenue through which the society reproduces itself. And through it, individuals receive their first orientation about the world. Once a child is born into the family or into this world, he came into a particular family. And it is within the context of the family that the child is being socialized on what the world is all about. The child knew nobody except his mother, rather his father and his immediate siblings. Before he now moves to school, the family now turned out to be the primary agent of socialization. Through the family, the child is able to learn what is right from what is wrong. And it is through the family that he will understand what this world is all about. Because what he learns from the family, via the correction and the upbringing, do this, don't do this, do that, that is what you are supposed to do, the child will learn from what they have been teaching him at home, and that is how he will learn and relate to the wider society. The family is therefore the core of every human society. Without the family, there will not be society, because it is through the family that the society keeps reproducing itself. The family creates the social sense of belonging in individuals. Just because I have said it before, that a child is born into a family, the siblings, the parents, are those that the child will see and begin to feel, yes, I have an identity. I have someone. <coughs> Excuse me. I have siblings. I have brothers and sisters. There is this belongingness that, will, that the child will begin to feel or the individual begin to feel that he has people. He is not alone in this world. After all, he came into a family and people that loves him and it is within the family that the child will learn or the individual will learn what he needs to know and how to relate in the society then let's try to look at the concept of family <coughs> the most important thing for you to note here is that there is no particular definition of what we call the family because what we see as family in our society may vary from the one we see in other society so family has no standard definition. But however, we define the family based on the context of our own society. Now, the standard sociological definition of family has been a group of people who are related to one another by bonds of blood, marriage or adoption, and who lives together, form an economic unit, and bear or raise children. Class, please listen. I did not say a family is the coming together of both a man and a wife, a, a man and a woman. No. I have said this. It's a group of people 
Why? Because I don't know the kind of family life that they have formed. I don't know if it is a woman to woman marriage that makes up the family or man to man marriage or single mother. Please, that is why I say it is a group of people. I did not specify because we are looking at it sociologically now and we did not specify a particular kind of marriage, but rather a group of people who are related to one another by bonds of blood. Bonds of blood simply means siblings relationship. My sister, my brother, the same mother, the same father. We have blood relationship. Then based on marriage, husband and wife are related based on marriage. Adoption, if you have any legal paperwork that made you to acquire an individual, that become part and parcel of your responsibility. He is now part and parcel of your family. So that is how you define family. But nevertheless, please try to define family based on the context of your own society. Today, family includes many types of living arrangements and relationship, which could be a single household or married couples, lesbian family, gay couples, multiple generations, name so much, many, there are many, so you find it very difficult to classify or have a particular definition of family. To accurately reflect the changes in family life, some sociologists believe that we need a more encompassing definition of what constitutes a family. Why do we need a more encompassing? Why? Because what is regarded as family in my own culture and society is different from what is regarded as family from other society. So we have to get a more encompassing definition. And just for you not to be confused, because if we are going to have an encompassing definition, we are not going to mention either names, either a woman or a man, or couples like man to man, because it does not happen. So just define it based on the culture of your own society. So family is culturally defined. Whatever definition, there will always be a husband, wife, and some addition. Even if they are practicing a gay marriage, a gay kind of family, one must assume the role of a wife, and the other must assume the role of a husband. Their unborn children, if they like, they have to adopt and have to take care of the responsibility of these children. It is their responsibility because they have adopted these children and it becomes part and parcel of their responsibility. So we cannot have a particular definition, but we define it based on the culture of our society. In some culture, the definition stop at husband, wife, and their children. In some others, the definition extends to include the extended relationship. You understand, we have the extended form of family. If you are defining family based on the African setting, you cannot define it and stop from the mother, father, and their children alone, which is the monogamous kind of family life. No. In our own African setting, we believe in the extended family life. Why? Because as you are marrying a man, you are marrying his family. They can come at any time. That is only if you are not residing within the family setting. If you are not residing in the same household as other members of the family, you'll be expecting them at any time because they are part and parcel of your family. Now let's quickly look at the structure and characteristics of the family. In a developing, in a developing society like ours in Africa, the primary form of social organization is through kinship tie. It means that kinship network figure most or is more prominent in our activities, in our day-to-day -day life. Why? Because we run to them in terms of need, in terms of happiness, in terms of joy, and in terms of sorrows. They are always there for us. What is kinship? Kinship refers to a social network of people based on common ancestry, marriage, or adoption. People that are related to each other based on blood tie, marriage, or adoption, they are members of your king group. Through kinship network, people cooperate so that they can acquire the basic necessities of life. If today I am lacking, which I never pray for it, but if it happened, which we never pray, I know where to run to. I know who are among my king's men 
that will assist. I know I don't need to only rely on my friends because there are limits to what my friends can do for me. Even for the fact that now the society is changing, some friends can do what even your relatives cannot do for you. But to an extent, there are limits to what a friend can do for you. They will always require or need your family members to do that. Kinship system can also serve as a means to which property is transferred, goods are produced and distributed, and power is also allocated through the kinship tie. You know it. If your father or parents are from a royal home, you know that automatically you can also be called either a, a, king, um, a prince or a princess. In fact, to an extent, maybe you can even acquire the status of a king, maybe when your father is no more. Do you understand? So these are things that we looked. But in industrialized society, other institutions have taken the role of the king's men. You understand? There are certain institutions. We have the political system that is in charge of, with public policy. But in the traditional setting, it is the eldest man that dictates what happened in the family. He chooses how to govern and run the family. But here, yeah, there are certain institutions that take responsibility of that. We have the economic system that is responsible for the production and distribution of goods and services. That is only in the developed society. But in a traditional society or in a developing society, but not this present developing society, please, before now, it is the family and members of the king's group that sit and do most of these things for themselves. Contemporary family are primarily responsible for regulating sexual activities, socializing children, providing affection and companionship. This is the role of the family. It is the role of the family to socialize, regulate sexual activity, and provide this companionship between the family members, the children, and also the husband. Now let's look at classification of family along dimension. Basically, there are two classifications of family. We have family of orientation and family of procreation. Now what is the family of orientation? It is the family into which a person is born and in which early socialization usually takes place. Most of the people that are not married, they are in their family of orientation because they are still with their parents they gave birth to them in that same household. Their parent paid their school fees. Their parent questioned their activities. And the parent tells them that this thing is right and some certain things are wrong. They are still under the household of their, in the, under the same roof with their parents. They are still in their family of orientation because it is the family that tells them and socializes them of the, the right and the wrong. And they're still, even after they are grown up, since they are not married, they are still under the family of orientation. Although most people are related to members of their family of orientation by blood ties, adoption, which is a legal tie, and blood relationship. That is, based on marriage, you are related to your mother and father. Blood tie, which is siblings. Then adoption, the paperwork, which is legal. Now, the second one is the family of procreation. The family of procreation is that part of family or that family in which a person formed by himself based on marriage or adoption. Once you have left your family of orientation, the family in which you were born, either as a result of marriage you now form that family and begin to have the children of your own. You are now in family of procreation. Because that family, you form the family yourself. You are the one that will tell the ones that are coming up what is right from what is wrong. How they should behave. The norms and values of the society is now your responsibility as the individual. So you are now in the family of procreation. And people also are related based on legal or blood ties. Why? Because if you are married, you can choose to go and adopt. And the relationship between a husband and a wife, to an extent, is also legal. Why? Because you don't need to the court 
to certify your marriage. But once a bride price has been paid, the marriage is confirmed. Now let's quickly look at the function of the family. One important function of the family is sexual regulation function. Family is the major institution through which the society organize and regulates the satisfaction of sexual desires among members. Take for instance, if there is no marriage, no family, you can choose to go with whoever you choose to. You can decide to say, this is who I picked today that I want to have sex with. But if you are married, please, you don't do that. Even if you choose to look for someone, you cannot do it in the open because people are watching you. People know your wife and you know they will talk about it. Most especially in our society, people can talk. You understand? So you mostly do these things in the hidden. Why? Because your personality, your family name is part of it. So if you don't want to tarnish it into the whole world, you do some certain things in the hidden. Second one is rep reproductive function. All society need to replace its member as many grow old and die off. And we have said it before now that the family is an avenue to which the society reproduces itself. As the young ones are coming, the society will continue to progress. But if, take for instance, couples decide not to give birth to children, what will happen? If they die and no children again, the society will go extinct because society will not continue without people. People makes up a society. The next one is socialization. It is the responsibility of the family to teach the upcoming ones the children, the upcoming generation, on what they need to know, on the norms and values of society in order for them to be able to relate to the wider society. Families serve as the primary agent of socialization before the school. It is within the context of the family that the child knows what he or she needs to know before going out. At least, the basic thing is, good morning, mommy, I want to eat, I want to go to the toilet, how to respect elders. These are the basic things that a child of one to three years should know before going to the nursery school. We have provision of economic support. It is the responsibility of the family to provide the basic needs of life to its members. That is why in a traditional African setting, where the family cannot be able to provide these necessities, we run to our king's men to provide this support. That is why the African setting cannot do without members of their king's group. But in a developed society, they have to fend for themselves. But this economic support, it is the responsibility of the family to provide it. Status placement. People take the status of their parents. That is why I said it that if you belong to a royal home, you acquire the status of the royal home. If you, you are born into poverty, if your parents are very poor, if not by God's grace that God has even changed your own status with time, you automatically you are born into that status. In a society where the caste system, the caste system is well established and they are recognized, you belong to the caste of your parents, you have no any other objection about that. Then the emotional support. It is the responsibility of the family to show this love, affection to their members. This warm, it is the responsibility of the family. We protect, we show love and affection, and we make the individual within the family to see that he has people around him. Then the next one is protective function. We do whatever it takes. Even if members of our family are not doing the right thing, we try as much as possible to protect them. Why? Because they are our family. Even for the fact that we'll scold them, we'll have to go in a hidden and say, what you have done is very wrong. But it is our responsibility to protect. To an extent, 
this blood relationship is flowing even if you know that your member of your immediate family which is your brother or sister is a thief you will feel shy about it you will try to protect her by saying that she is not a thief even when you know that she stole you will defend her for as long as she was not caught in the act you can still defend her because you are being overprotective of your siblings thank you we'll stop here and now we are going to have another lectures but after this we will take the session three of our class thank you and enjoy your class